These are very talented people, but actors, they are not. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down another top 10 horribly awkward TV cameos. Understand you are looking for me. I'm John Wayne. And don't think that the Brits aren't prone to the odd cringy cameos. Check out WatchMojo UK's list of the top 10 WTF TV cameos by Brits for proof. For this list, we'll be looking at more horrible celebrity cameos from throughout TV history. These cameos can be awkward in numerous ways, including being misplaced, unnecessary, or poorly acted. I hope I'm not disturbing you. I'm Nancy Reagan. Number 10. Boy George, the A-Team. That's me. I'm looking for Cowboy George. Well, I'm almost a man, Boy George. Hi. Um... Can you think of a more awkward pairing than Boy George in this squad? The A-Team was a very popular show in the mid-1980s. It followed four Special Forces veterans who escaped from a military prison and work as mostly do-gooder mercenaries. Although comical in spots, it was constantly being criticized for its sexism and violence, which is why the inclusion of Boy George was so jarring. In the show, Boy George wins over Mr. T's B.A. Baracus and ends up performing to a bar full of tough, country-loving good old boys. We're not sure, but we highly doubt that Culture Club is their kind of music. Can anyone say ratings ploy? Nonsense, everybody likes Culture Club. Number nine, Will I Am, Joan of Arcadia. You wanna play? It's a trick. You think I can see you, Joan? We're not dogging Will I Am's acting chops here because he's actually not half bad. We're just docking points for how unnecessary his cameo is. In the episode Independence Day, he appears as God in the form of a three-card Monte player and gives Joan some advice about life by using the card con as a metaphor. You gotta keep your eyes open so you can see all the moves. His inclusion in the episode is really unnecessary, as a regular actor would really do just fine, and it simply comes across as pandering to Joan of Arcadia's teenage audience. That said, if you didn't know who Will I Am is, you probably wouldn't even know it's anyone special. Come on, keep your eyes on the queen, keep your eyes on the queen. Number 8. Tom Morello, Star Trek Voyager. Captain on the deck! The worst kinds of cameos are the obvious ones, such as the case with Tom Morello appearing as Crewman Mitchell. In the scene, Mitchell randomly appears and gives Janeway directions. The two share a brief, awkward conversation, complete with Morello looking directly into the camera, before Janeway walks away. Crewman Mitchell, how have you been? Uh, never better, ma'am. Morello is a fan of Star Trek, and the son of series producer Rick Berman is a fan of Morello's work in Rage Against the Machine and Audio Slave. The scene, which could have easily been cut from the episode, screams, we just wanted to hang out with Tom Morello for a day. Uh, to the left, ma'am. Thank you. Number seven, Alice Cooper, Monk. He's the guy. Who's the guy? Alice Cooper? In the episode Mr. Monk and the Garbage Strike, the garbage collectors of San Francisco go on strike, and Monk grows delirious from the smell of garbage. While single-handedly cleaning up the city, Monk tells his colleagues that he has solved the murder on his mind. Alice Cooper must have read about Jimmy Cusack's handcrafted wingback chair. As he explains, the real Alice Cooper is a collector of antique wing chairs, and committed murder when he discovered that the head of the sanitation union had one that he wanted. While this is being explained, Alice can be seen snarling at the camera and caressing a chair. It's very weird and very awkward, but then again, that's Monk for you. Number 6. Michael Stipe. The Adventures of Pete and Pete. What can I get you, son? How about a sluxicle? R.E.M. was all the rage in the early 1990s, and their popularity resulted in one incredibly awkward cameo from the band's singer, Michael Stipe. In a special episode of Pete and Pete, Stipe appears as a sludgesicle vendor named Captain Scrummy. And while Stipe is a great singer, as an actor, he's, well... You'll have to talk to Mr. Tasty if it's a blue tornado you're after. Look, we understand that Pete and Pete is intentionally corny and ridiculous, but there's a difference between good corny acting and bad corny acting. This is the latter. Stipe makes some truly weird facial expressions, and his voice stays in a sleep-inducingly monotone throughout the entire scene. It's surreal, but not in a good way. You look like a bona fide sludge sickle man. Number five, Quentin Tarantino, All-American Girl. Hi, excuse me. Mr. Kimmon. Look, we all know that Quentin Tarantino was one of the best directors of the past few decades. That said, everyone also knows that he isn't the strongest actor, especially when he puts himself in scenes alongside titans like Samuel L. Jackson and Jamie Foxx. Quentin appeared in one episode of the short-lived ABC sitcom All American Girl. I do a lot of business with the Korean community, and uh, I always believe, mark of a good salesman, speak your customer's language. Yeah, the constant Tarantino jokes were fun, but the dude was his usual fast-talking, awkward self. If that wasn't bad enough, his on-screen chemistry with Margaret Cho was, well, they weren't very compatible, let's just say that. 
It's weird to think that Tarantino went from Pulp Fiction directly to whatever this was. Okay, Desmond. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Number four, Macy Gray, Fuller House. Oh my God, it's Macy Gray. Oh, she's my girl. Call it an awkward cameo for an awkward show. In Fuller House's third episode, wittingly titled Funner House, the gang runs into Macy Gray at a nightclub. Hey, DJ Tan! I haven't seen you since that elephant ride in Cambodia. Okay, let's get the obvious out of the way first. Why Macy Gray? She may be a great singer and talent, but her last big hit was in, like, 1999. We don't think the demand for Macy Gray cameos are very high. Our question is answered later in the episode, when Grey awkwardly plugs her new album, although the following dig at herself is admittedly quite funny. It's the one redeeming aspect of this otherwise cringy and terribly active cameo. This is from my new album called The Way You Can Buy It Online or Out of the Trunk of My Car. <laughs> Number three, Donald Trump, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Look folks, before we go too far, I've got something to tell you. We mean, it's Donald Trump. Need we say more? In the fourth season episode, For Sale by Owner, the family is offered an exorbitant amount of money for their house by a mysterious buyer. This buyer turns out to be none other than the Trumpmeister himself. I like keeping a low profile. Donnie T awkwardly appears to an incredibly lame and overly scripted fanfare, including an exaggerated announcement and Carlton fainting in excitement. Trump then awkwardly acts and prances his way around the set, delivering horribly timed, monotone lines before leaving barely two minutes later. Come on, Fresh Prince, you're better than this. What did you do? Everybody's always blaming me for everything. Number two, Lance Bass, Seventh Heaven. So I guess we have a date tonight, huh? Some musicians and singers beautifully transition from music to acting, and some don't. Case in point, NSYNC's Lance Bass, who appeared as Rick Palmer in an episode of Seventh Heaven. This was Bass's first role in television, and it shows. His acting is painfully wooden and emotionless, and his line delivery is stilted. Like, he's reading off a cue card just off screen. We were just experimenting with what happens when friends kiss friends. This episode aired in January of 2000, the same month NSYNC's Bye 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 debuted, and only two months before their most successful album, No Strings Attached, was released. This show was geared towards teens and preteens, hence Bass's blatantly commercial cameo. My brother Rick's right here and he says he'd love to take Lucy out. I didn't say that. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. And this is uh, Wayne, out of our Edmonton operation. Sure could use some of your class around home. Oh, I'm so sorry, I have to go perform. Oh, that, that's cool, we gotta go solve a murder, so. I'm just gonna head in for a bit of a dip and I suddenly thought, oh, the sharks in there. Number one, Paris Hilton. Veronica Mars. No one cares what you think, Veronica Mars. Not anymore. Paris Hilton has made numerous cameos over the years, like when she appeared as a goddess on Supernatural. And as you can probably imagine, they have all been very jarring. Her most awkward cameo is arguably her appearance as Caitlin Ford in the second episode of Veronica Mars. Here, she is given an important role, but her character falls wicked flat. What's Troy doing talking to Veronica? It seems incredibly out of character for a new show to do a cameo like this, and it reeks of network meddling. It's as if UPN wanted to pander to its viewers, and was willing to jeopardize the quality and identity of its show to do so. So, aren't you supposed to be going back east for school? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and subscribe for new videos every day.